G'day. In a long line of never getting around to doing things, we have a Rainbow Drop indoor play tent for smarts and crafts. Promise someone to build a little indoor fort for them. And after a few half years, get around to doing the next best thing, which is just buying it. Can't make one like Greendale. Just get one off the shelf. It is a rainbow design, but if this is the top of the bag, this is all upside down. So here we go. Let's actually see what's inside. So all the sticks. Oh, that's a lot. Where's the instructions? Oh, here we are. A fold-up play tent requires an adult to help assemble. Got the path list and I guess you're supposed to figure out how to put these poles together. Let's see that. So one thing I have an issue with is the random capitalization of some of the words here. See, it says spread out tent with a capital T, continue on. Somewhere else you have place top cap, that's capitalized for some reason. Top cap is a very special thing. And let's see how this goes. And this orange patch, and this is the window. Got some hook and loop tabs here. You see the inside, the rainbow nation. And some ties here. Probably to hold the flaps open so you can go in and out. Here's the tippy top. So this laid it flat surface. This is as flat a surface I get. Lay the poles out. Oh yeah. Assemble two sides of the base frame and slide base into tent. These basically fall into themselves. They are not labeled, so if you can figure out which one's the base, which one's the side, well, that's more present than I am. So we have one, two, one, two, three, three, three. So we have four sides and four base poles based on the fact that this base is going to have three segments. Otherwise, you have a really fat out and short tent the other way around. These knobs appear to be the bonuses to attach the, the base to. See arrows on the bottom of this, 
it's going to suggest that this, these two ends will be on the base. This is going to be part of the wall. So you're sitting like that. See that webbing on the middle piece, on the middle joint there. See here where I put it incorrectly because the base was going to start bowing in a very improper way. We pull back here, we see that this is a square base and this is what you should not be doing because you're supposed to be doing two sides with inside the tent before you actually start putting the wrist together. Land sheet is probably going to be the base. These ties appear to be everywhere along the base. Give it a nice guide to, secure, to, to securing it. Okay, that was a bit of a struggle, more than I would like, but that's the base in. Seems flat enough, and it's pretty taut on the bottom. You can see, preview, what it would look like. Okay, so that's, I thought that was a door, apparently that's, Side window for the view. Let's get the, the walls up. All right, here's the capital T, capital C, top cap to get this pyramid formed at the top. Ugh. All right, that's one side. Let's start one corner before we have this thing collapse on us. Get another of this. Probably would be cleaner if you sorted out the fabric ahead of time. Push it up the top. So it's as flush as you can. Give the top cap Room to breathe. It's starting to hold up a little bit of a shape. That's only one of four corners. One thing I've had to do a few times is bend the rod in the middle back to give it some leeway before I prop it up, cinch the wall. So after some sweating and falling over on the inside, trying to put the walls together without poking the top through, this is the whole thing assembled. And you do see the raindrops coming down in a rainbow fashion. Let's open up. And you see the interior here has the standard Roy G. Biv line up with pink in the break. They do have ties to make sure poles don't fall off or come too far off the wall. This one I didn't get around to doing it. Actually I didn't do any of the wall ones. But it seems to hold up okay otherwise. The ones on the floor seem to be better or actually more useful with the side walls being at this point cursory so that's the front door this is the window 
And that has also got some hook and loop patches to hold it down with a window that's got circle through. If you roll up a window for a nice summer breeze and the indoor, you maybe even want to like venture outside, throw it out in the garden. These simple ties will keep the mosquitoes flying right through. It's decent enough. Size wise, we have about 110, 115 on the base in, cent in centimeters or 43 by 45. Roughly, it's supposed to be more of a square. If it looks a little bit bowish, you may want to cinch it in a bit in the corners, in the joints, so they're all flush. Up along the base to, base to tip, it's 156 centimeters or 62 inches. See here, what you got at the end, it's still a bit, needs a bit of a massage to try and get through there. Otherwise, it seems to be all right. This is supposed to be microfiber and the warning tag says it's not fireproof. So be careful if you want to run to shelter for it. If it gets dirty, it says also spot clean, which means just leave it, let it get as rank as the kid's going to make it. If those latches are not closed, this seems to be falling apart in a pretty big gaping hole. But it seems otherwise okay. And if you want to let more of the air in, you see the rainbow just run all along the outside, catching that raindrop. We'll see you next time, another episode of Media Watch.